be absolutely astonishing. Let's not mince words. All right, everybody, it is finals time. I'm going to send it over to the booth with Marshall and Paul. Thank you, Maria, and welcome to the booth here. It is, of course, time for the finals here at the Pro Tour. That's Paul Chian. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. Thank you so much for coming along. And uh, this is where things get ratcheted all the way up, Paul. We're going to play a best three out of five to see who our champion is going to be. They laid it out beautifully at the news, de news desk there. We're talking about relative newcomer to this level, Kane versus Nathan. And Nathan... <laughs> Going for history, I mean, these things get hard to compare side by side, but this, make no mistake, this is a historical level run that Nathan's on already. Two things to consider. One, another victory within the context of that run would put it even higher on the rankings, and also we're not done with it. That This this run is very much still alive. Yeah, Monty touched on this. It, it, it's, I believe many will consider him the best right now. I we're, do. We're, we're, we're starting to get into, if he wins this event, does he make it into the top 10? Is he gonna climb that list? He's still going, he's just getting started. Absolutely. And there he is, Nathan Stoyer coming out. He is gonna be playing Rakdos Midrange, the deck of the tournament. And uh, he looks happy to be there, maybe getting comfortable. You know, that this is a generally a anxious, nervous time. And there's the opponent, Kane Reinhard, and they're gonna sit down with Rectos Reanimator in hand. So two similar builds for our players, um, but a bit of a departure in the hands of Kane as we see them going for a small Reanimator sub game here. Yeah, and I, I, I think both players might be pretty familiar with each other. Both play a lot of Magic Online. Nathan Stoyer winning the Mox last year, and then Kane Reinhardt, Reinhardt excuse me, qualifying for, the, for this event via the Mox Showcase. So Respect. Respect. They know. For anybody who kind of plays on Magic yeah. Online, you know who kind of the ringers are. You know who, who's like, you got to keep an eye on that person. That That's person right. wins all the time. It's a matter of time before <laughs> they make it to the Pro Tour and win. Last year was Nathan. Maybe it's Kane here. This, this happens all the time that we see people come up through the Magic Online ranks. And uh, you know you're a real one when you do well at that level. All right, let's to get into our first game here. It looks like it's going to be Nathan Stoyer on the play. He's going to start things off with Reckoner Bankbuster. Pass turn back over to Kane. And they've got Land Land Go. Nothing on turn two. Also, no red mana source just yet. Yeah, no no Harvester or Fable on, on either side. But Nathan, given kind of this draw, going to go for kind of a, a slower slower development here. Going for the main phase card draw here because he does play two copies of Duress. Could find a duress here off the uh, the bank buster. Looks like he's gonna have to settle for land go as it turns out. And really like, by the way, this inclusion of the Phyrexian Flesh Quarter. Given the removal spells that everybody plays, it basically dodges everything. Yes. I mean, think about the removal spells that you're playing in the Rakdos mid range deck. Mm -hmm. It's go for the throat and cut down. <laughs> Those are the premium <laughs> removal spells. This one manages to sidestep That's both funny. of them. And you can play it for three or even occasionally for seven mana. As you see, it also has a kind of an annoying ward ability if you end up in a race situation. It'll cost you three extra in this case. Yeah, and if you can't even if you can't find the other seven drops in your deck, it's another card that you can reanimate. Yeah, and it is huge. Okay, Nathan's gonna be content to just continuing to uh, add cards to hand. Nathan does have that invoke despair, which is an answer to the Flesh Gorger. Also drew the one copy of a braid. Great way to have an additional removal spell, but gives you the flexibility. I don't think they were considering the Flesh Gorger nearly as much as opposing bank busters that players might play for this event. And you see that ward trigger. But you have to like that favor, uh, the exchange in favor of Kane. Yeah. Okay, and there's Ooh. another addition to the deck that you don't see on the other side. That's at Sushi the Blazing Sky for yeah, Kane. And this is a really, really annoying card really to annoying. play against, especially when you're a Rakdos deck, because you have to kill it, right? You want to get it off the battlefield. But the problem is then it leaves something behind. And if you give your opponent three treasure tokens, 
we're talking about just hard cast Atraxa just from the three treasure tokens, right? This is the type of deck that can actually use those three treasures, and then if not, it's effectively drawing two cards. Yeah, but Nathan, however, much further ahead on cards here. Three activations here off the Bank Buster, along with this Fable and an Invoke Despair in hand. And under no pressure whatsoever. Right, so now you're thinking, okay, well, maybe I can just not kill this. Uh huh. And look, have you attack me, but now I also have a Bank Buster along with this Goblin token, and we're going to just try to race, and then maybe I play it later before the kind of the turn you can go off and play your seven drop. It's like, okay, you now get the treasure tokens, you played your Traxa, kill your Traxa, and kill you. And by the way, this is another reason why the Flesh Gorger is good. You can see that Kane decided to use the Cruelty of Gix and just read ahead to Chapter 3. Right. Now, if you're on Nathan's side, however, I think you might just have to make that decision. You go, you know what? This is an unfortunate situation. You now have a giant creature in play, and I absolutely need to get rid of this big life-linking creature. Perhaps I just need to go ahead, cast my go for the throat, kill the Atsushi, right? Give you that possibility of giving you that three treasure, and then you can still cast Invoke Despair and get the 7-5 off the battlefield. So it does have the mana for everything, I believe, if Nathan hasn't played a land, right? Two for a go for the throw, play a land, then sacrifice the treasure, and you can cast the Invoke Despair. And given Kane's hand, maybe it doesn't even get the treasures here. Might just look for extra cards, right? That's true. Tough decision. Kane's hand is just all removal. Yeah, they're taking a good close look at that hand and saying, you know what, I could use some more action here. Yep, looking to get some value here. Oh, oh hey. replacement at sushi and uh, likely uncastable, I guess. I don't think they can cast Itali. that Atali. Yeah. yeah. Good, uh, it invoke Despair here, so clears the board. And that's a really nice way to get rid of the Flesh Gorger. Otherwise, it costs you seven. And you know Nathan's breathing a sigh of relief that Kane didn't make treasures there. Mm -hmm. Crew bank buster. Yeah, didn't make treasures and effectively bricked on half of it. I'm going to use the treasure right away to cast a duress on you. And you right. hear Nathan's yeah. intentions. They are unkind. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you were kidding when you said right? all removal. All pull. removal. Double go for the throw, double cut down here. Now go for, for the th go, for, go for the throat does kill Shieldred, so might want to go ahead and take that one. The removal spells will. Both both removal spells will kill both the um, the fable token, excuse me, the reflection of uh, Kiki Jiki, along with that goblin token. We'll take a go for the throat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's your turn after that. Okay, go for the throat. Pass the turn back, says Nathan. Kane's going to take a look at the op uh, the top card. Now, there is some pressure here to cast at sushi. Yeah. As this is the window to do so, and that's going to happen. And Itali, unfortunately, is going to disappear into the blind eternities. You can form life totals. Yeah, 13 and 16. Oh, you have me at 10? I'm at 10. Oh, I missed the 6 damage. I didn't write it down. Thank yeah, you. so life totals are off. I was a little surprised that Kane was on 20 here, given that big attack from uh, right. from Nathan here. So, In fact, Kane is actually at half of that. Yeah, so a lot more pressure here for Kane, right? So yes. now if you're on Nathan's side, you go, okay, well, I know you don't have the 7 mana card in your hand, because you would have gotten the treasure on the previous turn feeling a little bit safer about using that go for the throat to mm -hmm. kill that Atsushi. Of course, also the duress. Now you have perfect information. You do happen to know all of it. But this is why Atsushi is a decent card, right? Right. If Nathan decides to use it, then Kane can reload a little bit, though. Right, but Kane may be too far behind at exactly, this point. Exactly, because now you're in a situation where Nathan can make a big attack, put Kane down to four, then Nathan has all kinds of cards he can win the game with, right? We're looking right. at the Chandra. Chandra can deal five damage. You have a light up the night. Burn. Nathan also has a Shieldred in hand, right? Which That's is right. another way to get, get uh, go through some damage, do some draining. And I assume right. that Kane wants to do the same thing as last time. Yep. Okay, a little that's bit of action gonna, that's, there. That's not going to be great. Nathan does know about the removal here in Kane's hand. Kane can kill 
I suppose two creatures here if they want to use a double cut down. Boy, but Nathan has no chill. Look at the follow-up plays. You want a Fable? Do you want a Shieldred? Right. Looks like Nathan just wants to try to go for maximum damage. If you play a Fable, you can then use the token from the Fable along with the Reflection to crew the Bank Buster and attack with the Pilot as well. That's, a, that's one extra point of damage. Usually you crew it up, but hey, no blockers here. There's also so Kinzan. Mm -hmm. Does that that can sneak mess, in? Does that does that change the clock a little bit? Now no legends in play, so it would cost four mana to put two one ones into play. You you use the pilot to crew the bank buster, and that's an attack for eight. Two is not a good place to be if you're in Kane's seat. Right. There's a lot of things that could finish you off from that point quite easily, including just combat. Ooh, Nathan really in the tank about how best to proceed. Now, this is an important strategic note. Yeah, but is that Nathan is way far ahead right now. Right. But look at all the time that he's taking, right? This yeah. is really, he understands. Oh, yeah, you don't need to do that. There you go. Right. That uh, getting this turn right could have an out, uh, effect on the yeah. outcome of the game. I so imagine it's going to be four. Just, this is just going to be a fable here. Get you down to six, play fable as. Nathan knows about the go for the throat, right? So just continue developing. This gives you more draws at finding those burn spells, right? Geez, and another bank buster too? Yeah. So this is going to kill something, but what can Kane find here? Yeah. No, no big seven mana creature in the graveyard and only seven, six lands in play. Exactly, so you can't even go land. Right. And the land that was revealed was a Black Cleave Cliffs. Yeah. So had Kane found an Atali, if it was an untapped land, that would have been something. Indeed. And you can see that uh, Kane cashed in that blood token immediately, found Invoke Despair. Gets so, full value there. Yeah, all, all Kane has available here is a go for the throw. Perhaps you just use it on the pilot to minimize potential damage coming in. Go for the throw only has two targets right now. Okay. All right. But as you mentioned, it's important that Kane did that now. Right, but now with Fable, so many different cards can just win the game on the spot here for Nathan Stoyer. Nathan's going to cycle away a Swamp and find Shieldred, although he already had that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there's so a Sokenzen that you That's, mentioned, and he gets the discount. So you can go double crew here. And that yeah. should be enough for lethal. Oh, boy, Paul. Nathan Stoyer with a quick game one victory over Kane Reinhard. These players, um, both from the USA, Nathan's playing with Team Handshake, who dominated the tournament. They put four players into the top eight. If you're just joining us, uh, Nathan's the only one left. They actually had a fairly unlikely setup, Paul, where they were the top four seeds, so they didn't play each other at all in the quarterfinals and could have lived the unlikely dream of being the four players left in the tournament. Right. <laughs> that would have been incredible. They, had the been they were perfectly set up for that. That is not how it ended up going. Right. In fact, all three of Nathan's teammates lost in the quarterfinals, and it was only Nathan who was able to advance. And uh, and he won a semifinal match. Now for Kane, they're playing with Team Sewer Rats, <laughs> which is a great name. That, that is a, that is a great name, and uh, actually a, a, a good amount of really solid players on that team. Yeah. Uh, led by Gavin Thompson Exner. That's right. Uh, who's played in a number of arenas and championships by now. Oh, uh, kind of Gavin a regular. will play in anything. Anything. <laughs> Gavin's a gamer. Gamer. <laughs> Cube, like you name yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely everything. So that's, uh, that's Alpha Frog if, uh, from Twitter. Right. So, um, again, lots of great players on both teams. And I think it's kind of, you have Team Handshake, which is kind of that established best team, lots of great players, but what's the next team, right? What's the next team that can potentially put together some fantastic finishes? And it could be this team. It absolutely could be. This is a fired up team. Also interesting, um, I heard Kane say to Cedric that they feel like they're representing the boomers. 
the old school players here versus the Zoomers, which is uh, where Kane put Nathan. Huh. So there's a little bit of uh, old guard versus new kids on the block going on here, too. Yeah, it, it is odd, though, because Nathan is one of those players who've been playing at an ex since he was an extremely, he was, since he was extremely young. He's, I mean, he was a little kid. I mean, yeah, I yeah. mean, he started playing in 2011. It yeah. says here Kane started in 2013. Yeah. But right. I, but I when think you start it's more playing about when you're how seven, old are you. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair. I mean, Nathan's been around forever. Yeah. But that's kind of what it takes, though, right? Yeah. Like, look, look at the people who won the last few tournaments, people like Nathan and Reed. Yeah. Right? And even though, you know, Reed's probably more considered part of the old guard at this point, he started playing when he was five. Yeah. Nathan's been playing since 2011. He's in his early 20s now. Similar path for Reed as well. Started out on Magic Online. Yep. Okay. That person you don't want to play. Took a little bit of time and then has now look at look at his resume, right? And Nathan, well on his way. I mean Nathan has a pretty impressive career if he starts if he stopped playing tomorrow. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's a run. Three top finishes and a win. Yeah. Within, and, and the win the was last world championship events, right. too. I mean the you know, we're even for people that don't play Magic, you can say, look, I won the World Championship, and people know what that means. Yeah. All right, game number two underway between Ethan Storm and Kane, Kane Reinhardt, and we are underway with cut down to take down the opposing Blood Tithe Harvester. It does leave a blood token behind, and uh, the follow-up play for Nathan Stoyer is a Reckoner Bankbuster. And nice start here for Nathan on the draw, able to kind of... Um, slow down Kane with that cut down into the turn two bank buster. Cut down just such an impressive removal spell. One of the best, I think, at one mana that we've seen in a while. In a right? long time, yeah. It's, it, you know, people have just said it's, it's a format warping removal spell. Look at, look at the hand for Stoyer. <laughs> I'm assuming there's a fable. Let's not let him get to five. I don't, I don't see a fable. Is there a fable? No, there's a, I mean. Of course there's oh, a there, fable. Of course there's a fable, Marshall. <laughs> 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 Why would you not? Right. So, one, two, three, cut down, bank buster into Fable. Can Kane match Nathan's start here? It, you know, removal spell into Atsushi, and Kane had the first two drop on the board, too, with the Harvester. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. far, but things could fall apart if Stoyer is able to hit those land drops and start chaining together triple Invoke Despair, right. which is the kind of firepower he has. Light of the Night's going to hit the okay. bin, and that's in lieu of finding land drops, which he right. did. That was a swamp off that the top. That is a whole lot of Invoke Despairs. And again, just securing those land drops here for Nathan Stoyer, yeah. using Chapter 2 from Fable, using the Bank Buster. This Cruelty of Gix in Kane's hand is going to whiff, right? I mean, Nathan does not have a creature or a planeswalker in hand. That's assuming that Kane starts things off at the beginning of the story. Right. I mean, you usually do. On a relatively stable board, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, you usually do. There's nothing to reanimate. I suppose you can just go ahead and tutor. Oh, going straight to two. Look at that, yeah. Paul. There you go. Cruelty of 17, Gix. 16. This is going to have Kane lose three life, and then they get to search through the library for anything. I am curious. Could just look to get in Atraxa, potentially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Invoke Despair, also just a powerful spell to go ahead and get. Now, if you think that there's a high likelihood that Nathan's going to cast and Invoke Despair next turn, uh -huh. then you know that your dragon's going to die, give you some treasure tokens, so perhaps getting in Atraxa isn't too bad. Oh, that's interesting. This also highly incentivizes Stoyer to use... Oh, that was the fourth Invoke Despair off the top? Are you kidding me? All right, well... Uh, anyway, to use said Invoke Despair, because it will nab the Cruelty of Gix as well. Oh, right, right, this right. Is, um, yes. yes, it will. This is part of the, part of the reason why the more heavily Cruelty-based decks right. that we saw this weekend right, didn't perform well. Treasure Tokens, what did Kane get? Either another cruelty or maybe an Atraxa. So, so Kane already had two cruelties the turn that ah. they cast it. So okay. I am curious what they fetched. I'm hoping it's an Atraxa because that would make it very exciting. Yes, it would. 
Three, six, six seven. Eight. Oh, seven. Starts with an A. Atali. Yeah, it's Atali. Atali's pretty good. That's not bad. Let's see what, <laughs> what we hit here. Okay, All not right. great. What about over? Seven, seven, three, two, kill a reflection. Not Whoa. bad. Getting that, getting that Blood Tithe Harvester was actually very relevant because that is something that you can sacrifice to an Invoke Despair. Additionally, Kane has that second cruelty of Gix. Nathan can go if Nathan goes invoke this bear. Kane can just go. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll just I'll just sack my Italia again. Get it back, right? Get it back. More value. The question is, does that beat two more invoke despairs on the f next following turn? Right. It just feels like it's really uh, tough to beat that. Yeah, I mean, every time you cast an Italia, though. Yeah. There can, you can just add more and more to the board. That's what if true. you hit an invoke despair? That's true. Or a Chandra. Could be anything. Yeah, this is going to be a very swingy sequ sequence of turns. Oh, boy. Just to make things a little more interesting, <laughs> it's Chandra Hope's Beacon in hand for Stoyer now, too. Boy, you wanted the heavy hitters. Stoyer has them. Yeah. Oh, and one other line, I suppose, is if Nathan completely taps out for an Invoke Despair and Kane can find land number not. Land yes. number seven with the two treasures. That is you can a flip. flip Itali That's for true. a lethal attack. That is true. That's something that Nathan's going to have to keep in mind. And with that oh, in no mind, invoke to spare. no invoke to spare. We're going to see Shieldred instead. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is a sweet game. Both players getting to do some very powerful stuff here in the mid-late game. So what can we do here? Can we attack with Atali and hope for a trade? If you attack with Atali, do you put yourself dead to some combination of burn effects? Well, there is a Fable of the Mirror Breaker in Kane's hand. Can you cast Cruelty of Gix to go fetch a way to kill the Shieldred? Right. Probably. It's so just starting with the attack here. Now, remember, Kane's deck doesn't have quite the reach that Nathan's that cast, right. right? Kane does have three copies of Invoke Despair, but in order to play a lot of these other big threats, I don't believe Kane is playing with Chandra. Yeah, you're right. Okay, that's a big okay. hit. Seven damage down to nine goes Nathan Stoyer. Kane has to be happy about that part. Right, but with an active Shieldred, you're going to get gain some of the life back. You have the Reckoner Bank Buster in play. You can draw a card, gain two life. Draw a card for your turn. That's another two life. So you're at 13. So you can afford to take one hit, maybe two even. Right. And set up for a potential burn you out kill. Now, let's again, with Chandra and Invoke Despair, you will need nine mana sources in play. If you have nine mana sources in play, you can use the Chandra to tick it up to give you two, mm -hmm. plus the three extra sources to go Chandra immediately into double, double Invoke Despair. despair. Ugh. Kane decided to uh, pitch a cut down to a blood token there, although that did cost them two life. Yeah, and this cruelty doesn't look especially impressive right now. Well, so, I mean, this time, if you did go for chapter one, you would get that Chandra and then try to figure out what to do on the following turn. So perhaps this is an okay turn to go for the chapter one on the cruelty of Gix. You have to think there's a reasonable shot that Nathan might have it. No duress is available for Kane, right? Can't do cruelty to get duress. That's just not in the main. Looks like all four start off in the sideboard. And if you're just joining us, we're in game number two, which I know is normally when you would think the sideboards. But since we're playing best three out of five, this is pretty yeah. sideboard. So Kane down to eight life here. Yeah. Does Nathan have enough here to, uh, to do enough damage? Now, also remember, you can burn Kane out with even maybe one less mana source. There's a light up the night in the graveyard. Right. That's a combination. You can go Chandra, pay the mana, pay four mana, flashback, remove counters from Chandra for lethal. Kane's only at eight here. That's right. Now remember, Chandra, at the very least, is still just five damage. That can go straight to the face, right? You can just go Chandra minus five, five to something, five to the face. Not going to be quite enough here. 
we saw it was go, through the, go for the throw there for Kane to try to contain the Shieldred. Will this invoke despair be good? Now it's it's really rough because if you invoke despair, you know Kane's just going to go sack that Atali and get it back with the cruelty. It's on board. How can you survive here? What what are the targets that Kane can get back with this cruelty? Can get back the Shieldred? Sure. That's in the yard. There's an Atsushi on Kane's side of the battlefield too. There's a Harvester as well. Yeah, the cruelty of Gix has looked very good and also kind of awkward at times, but the timing of it right here looks pretty good. I suppose if you do if you do cast the Invoke Despair, you do have to sack the enchantment. So that actually means that you right. can you can you can cast it. Kane would sacrifice the Harvester and the Cruelty of Gix. Kane has access to eight mana. Again, one mana short. Nine and two life allows you to flip the Atali. And that would be a lethal attack. That's right. With no blockers, Itali is a one-shot kill. And, but Kane does not have a land in hand, so would need to find that land to go for that lethal attack. And but it's kind of a tough spot here because what what are the other options here, right? It's do you play some Blood Tithe Harvesters? You could. It feels mediocre on with the options that Nathan has. But you, that does give you blockers. Like, you only yeah. needed two toughness up to get in front of Vitaly just to prevent just that particular game plan. You just have to be careful because you know Kane would light, will likely get back the Shieldred out of the graveyard. Mm. Right. Do you activate the Bankbuster now just to try to find a land? You do get a 1 1 blocker still, right? You get the pilot. And then you can still play the Harvester and have additional blockers for the Atali. Oof. This is yep. why these okay. mid-range uh, matchups yep, I like are it. so I like difficult. This. Nathan wants to set up for the Chandra kill on the following turn. He found go for the throat as well. Oh, go for the throat is There's big. There's an insurance policy for Nathan great, Stoyer. Great, great draw there. Blood Tithe Harvester, go for the throat. Two blockers, a way to kill the Atali. Safest play here from Nathan Stoyer, thanks to finding that go for the throat. So now Nathan has seven mana available. If Nathan draws a land off the top, that's, that'll give him access to eight mana. Yes. Play Chandra, two mana left. Tick up Chandra, flashback, light up the night for lethal. GG. Kane is looking at the graveyards here as Chapter 3 hits the Cruelty of Gix. Shieldred's the one that jumps out, but yeah, that's the one. Shield, Shieldred's absolutely the one. Can here. Kane draw a card here? I don't see a blood token. He doesn't have, right? Uh, they don't have blood. Maybe I, something in no, hand. They're just, Fables a, they're just a fable in a swamp. So oh, if no. Nathan can find. Man, and can. Itali doesn't have trample. Nathan, if Nathan really wants to find a land, Nathan can simply just chump, just block Itali. Oh, oh it Itali does have trample, trample. yeah, yeah. But if you're not going to die to two draw steps, it might be better to just block and use, the t use a mana here to cycle the blood to ensure you find oh, the mana source for the win. to give yourself two shots at hitting that land. It is something to consider. Of course, the easy thing is to just go ahead and just, hey, I'm just going to kill the Atali here. But if you block, you go up, you, you, die, you go to six. Okay, he just wants to get rid of it. Solve that problem for the long term as well. So just a fable here from Kane. And now Nathan's just on, hey, if you just draw a land, you're dead. Eight is enough. Kane has no way to draw a card. And this is kind of that... Nathan knows it. That little innovation that Team Handshake added to their deck. Some, uh, so, some folks playing one, some folks playing two copies of Light Up the Night. Can he find a land here? Let's see if Nathan Sawyer can rip an untapped land off the top of the library. Does not, but now... Because Cruelty of Gix isn't in play, and you've dealt with the Atali, you can pretty safely cast Invoke Despair if you invoking. want. Just start invoking, yeah. There is that Shieldred in play. I mean, Nathan's been sitting on these triple invokes forever.
Look at the resources that Nathan Stoyer has at Bill. I mean, Kane cast a tolly. Right. Like, aren't they supposed to win? <laughs> It's not. The Rakdos deck is uh, very resilient. Can answer lots of different threats here. It really can. Nathan's actually going to fire up the Bank Buster. And attack? Interesting. So now, now Nathan, if, if Kane chooses to block with the Shieldred, Nathan can sacrifice the Harvester with the Blood in play to finish it off. And Kane not really interested in going down to four here. So probably going to look to mm -hmm. put something in front. Six. This attack's probably, is Kane, will, will Kane be okay with the, all right, I will trade, I'm okay trading my Shieldred for the Bank Buster plus the Blood Tithe Harvester. Or will Kane just go ahead and try to maybe just put two creatures in front of it? Shieldred seems quite valuable here. It does. So maybe you just go for the double and if, hey, if Nathan has, it's got to be exactly cutthroat, because if Nathan has a go for the throat, probably would have cast it. Probably just would have killed Shieldred with it. Nathan putting all the pressure on Kane Reinhardt here. And now, they've got to make a choice about double block, chump block. Or no block. Or accept. Yeah, no block is... <laughs> no block means you just straight up die to Chandra. Oh, oh, but there's the no block from Kane. And now Nathan can just go right upstairs with it. And Nathan picks up game number two. Just like that, Paul. Is this happening? I had invoked too, so I don't think there was really a block. Can't play around both, right? Yeah, I think you probably can't block there because if I have Chandra, you might die to land light at the night anyway. A little bit of commiseration there. I think one person is more interested in the uh, in this discussion than the other. Yeah. But that's always been Nathan. Sure. Just always looking to get better and just talk through what's Yeah, happened. I mean, th that's the type of thing that I assume has really helped Nathan out uh, with regards to testing. Right, if you're the type of person that is always introspective, always trying to just figure out, regardless of whether it was you winning or losing, what was the right play, what were the considerations, what were going through your mind, what was going through my mind. Um, and, you know, a lot of times you'll have people say, well, you forgot about this, right? And, oh, right, okay, that's the thing that I should have considered here as well. Um, I'm sure that that's the type of thing that helps for testing and improving yeah, over time. Yeah, absolutely. And this is not just be because Nathan won. Nathan does this win or lose, right? That's just right. after every game, he just loves to talk magic and talk about all the different things that the other person, the opponent could have been considering and all the things that he's been considering. That's right. And what he's considering right now is perhaps another win. Is Nathan going to go win second win in three major tournaments in a row? We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're all going to find out.
Welcome back to coverage of Pro Tour March of the Machine. Marshall Sutcliffe with Paul Chion. We're in Minneapolis, Minnesota. You can see our intrepid production team behind the scenes. To be honest, they're the only reasons we get to do what we do, Paul. And we want to say thank you to everybody behind the scenes. Tons of people back there make these things possible. Oh, yeah. And it's always a pleasure to work with them in the feature match area. Well, I'm not, I haven't really got sick of saying this, but Nathan Stoyer is winning again. Uh, Nathan Stoyer, if you're just tuning in, the world champion, the one that lost to Reed Duke at the last Pro Tour, is back in the finals and somehow up two games to zero over Kane Reinhardt. Yeah. Uh, it's, which puts it's Nathan in an absolutely commanding position to win yet another premier level event and add uh, a Pro Tour trophy yeah. to the trophy case, which... It's just incredible. Might need to right? make another trip to Ikea with how many uh, trophies <laughs> this guy's winning. Yeah, it, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to look back, just even over the last 10 years, I don't think we've seen anything like it. No. Right? No. You have to go way back. I, I remember when Luis, you know, uh, top aided three pro tours. But that might have been more than 10 years ago. It was it, like right around there. It might have been, and he didn't win any of those events. And he didn't win any of them. And it wasn't, world, like, what is happening with Nathan Stoyer? I, it is incredible to see his career arc. I mean, Especially when you go back to the world championship when he thought he wasn't going to make top four. Right. He was distraught. He took off his headset. He had a breakdown. I mean, he was just like devastated after the amazing run that he had there and it turns out that he squeaked in on breakers and then won the whole thing yeah and he hasn't looked back absolutely has not i mean again at the world championship he was in commanding position just needed to win one of his last two matches lost both thought he was out and you saw just how much that championship meant to him and the thought of okay well that was it. It, it kind of felt chance. like was that was it, shot, right? right? It kind of felt like he thought, you know what? I finally did it. Everything came together for me, and now I've made it. And it turns out that was step number one. And he hasn't looked back since. And now if you're on Kane's side, down 0-2 against what many consider to be the best current player on the planet. Take it one at a time. It's going to be tough, but you brought this deck to play against Rakdos Midrange. That's right. Sure, you lost the first two, but you 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 are undefeated in the tournament so far. I was going to say Rakdos this is this would be the first time that Kane, like if this had been a best two out of three, that would have been Kane's first loss to this deck. Right. I'll keep this one. Kane defeated Carl Sarap in the top eight, playing the exact same deck. So just stay focused. Has a long, tough road ahead, but it can still be done. You can see the players are just getting ready to get underway with what could be our deciding game. And it looks like they are ready to go. Let's see if Kane Reinhardt can right the ship a little bit, pick up a game win here. Now that the sideboards are in play, and start a journey back to uh, seeing a trophy. Yeah, with this duress here, we're just gonna see some uh, Phyrexian Flesh Gorger beats. Now, Kane does have, excuse me, Nathan does have a removal spell that can actually kill it after sideboard. You, ha you do see that obliterating bolt that comes out of the board. Uh, really great way to deal with some pesky creatures because it has that exile clause. So now, Nathan has a clean answer to cards like that Atsushi. Just lands after the duress. But there's Frex and Flesh Gorger. Nice little piece of technology that we saw in game number one from Kane. They've brought this. And that's no lands card. for Nathan Stoyer. Nathan is going to miss land drop number three here. Whoa. So if Kane can just continue to just find some action because they have the lands and Nathan can stumble for one or two more turns. And this is something we haven't seen from Nathan. Yeah. 
Stumbling has not been on the menu. Whew, land off okay, the top. That's big, clean living. Big, big draw. And then now you can just run out that fable to continue getting those land drops together. But still, I mean, even just having one turn where you stumble could, could be the difference between winning or losing a game. And really great job. I mean, yes. Kane had nothing. Yes. And found that bank buster. I wonder if Kane oh, has an answer wow. here for the That is goblin action. Token. Look at this. Invoke despair as oh. well. Can go land, invoke you, kill your entire board. Remember, Nathan also missed the land drop, so now there's no rummaging happening right. no here rummaging either. No rummaging and no treasure tokens and you draw coming a card. either. There's another oh. land off the top. It is a tap land. Black Cleave Cliffs, but uh, that that'll do. With? Is that another invoke despair? Yeah, it is. Wow. Probably. Or I should say it was. <laughs> it was, because that's going to be the card that Nathan's going to take here. Still, there's some decent action there for Reinhardt. You see yeah, no absolutely. lands, just all spells. And so Nathan, Nathan does have plays, and that the Black Cleave Cliffs was very, very big because Nathan has several two drops, so next turn can go double spell if he wants, or can run out that Shieldred because with the Duress, he knows that the Shieldred would be safe if played, unless Kane goes ahead and casts the Gix's Command to make Nathan sacrifice the biggest creature, maybe try to get a little more value. Two good targets here for that Duress. Lot of action for Kane. And then, gotcha. Not going to miss these land drops. Now, are we going to just see a 3-3 three, three Flesh Gorger? Yeah. Doesn't look like it. We're probably just going to see Harvester. No, oh, we both. are. We are getting aggressive here. Look at this. Remember, Nathan did stumble a little bit, so yeah. Kane wants to apply maximum pressure here yeah, Kane, to Nathan. Kane's trying to slam the door on this game, though I will say that Stoyer has drawn out of that mana situation quite nicely. He has. Now, he does have the Shieldred, but because of the Gix's command, it's not even going to... Well, I suppose you can actually play around the Gix's command, right? Because you have the Bank Buster, it makes the player sacrifice the creature with the greatest power. So, activate the Bank Buster, sacrifice the Bank Buster. Yep. It's nice that they're equal. Yeah, exactly. They both have four power, so Nathan has the choice of which creature he wants to sacrifice. And of course, got to keep that shield in play. Right, that's the, that's the one. Oh, of course. Of course. So now you can go. That's really You can go Gix's command, kill all creatures with two power or less, and also sacrifice the creature with the biggest power. That this is. This Gix's command will sweep Nathan's side of the battlefield, and Kane will still have a four, can still attack for four this turn. This is the second time that Kane has removed all non land permanents from his opponent's mm -hmm. battlefield. And I wonder if Nathan is wondering, should I, should I have that? even crewed this? Because he knew about the Gix's command. He just shook his head. Is, are there creatures in the yard you want? I, I mean, this seems like a fairly Clean, straightforward. Get rid of those two. Yeah. I see one creature in the yard. Put counters on this? Oh, right. Sure, get in there. Hey, Kane looked like they wanted to try to get aggressive, and this is the most you can get. Perhaps even just saying, okay, you want right, to start using but, that bank buster, good luck. Now, if Nathan has something like, a, like an invoke despair, however. Oh. oh, Chandra, but not castable. Not castable. It would have been enough because that is a 5-5. Five -five. But you would take a lot of damage just to kill it. You Invoke would. Despair is the card that Nathan wanted to draw there. Definitely. Now what? You see, go for the throat in hand for, for Nathan, and that's why Kane has decided to bring the, 
the um, flush gorgers. Oh, this it dodges that. It also dodges cut down. Dodges in prototype form. So many things. If you can just put enough pressure, your opponents just cannot kill it. And remember, this pro this flesh gorger also has menace, right? It does. So there, Nathan needed to play two creatures, and I think Nathan is just, I guess, very close to that. Go down to one. He'll be at one. Yeah. Nathan, a little bit of desperation there. He immediately sacrificed the blood token, discarded go for the throat, and he found a fable of the mirror breaker. Now Kane has Drew and Atsushi off the top. Come on. Oh, guess wow. that's going to do it there. That's it. All right. Game number three goes to Kane Reinhard, who had to feel like, you know, I'm not really in this, <laughs> right? The first two games went so poorly for Kane. But uh, they're back in it now at two games to one. Have to keep your nerves calm in these moments yeah. as there's still a lot of magic ahead of us. And what a heads-up play there with the sacrifice on the Blood Tide Harvester to shrink the Shieldred and put Nathan in a pretty tricky situation there. Yeah, you can get an idea for how Kane finds themselves in this situation. You know this matchup. This is how you don't lose to that. Yeah. You're, you're going to see... Players contemplating what to do. You would think, hey, this is the same matchup. You just keep the same cards. But play draw, very important. When you're on the draw, you likely want to bring in more removal spells mm -hmm. to prevent the potential aggressive starts from your opponent's side. We talk about how these games, these decks have really powerful late games. It's like, oh, you think about Invoke Despair and Chandra. But you know what? A lot of games are just decided on Blood Tithe Harvesters, Fables, Shieldred, right? Those cards are the ones that get it done a lot of the time. And if you cannot match that start, it's just over. Yeah, I have to say that when this, when the last game started, I was kind of putting myself in Kane's seat. Everything's gone terribly. You're down 0-2, and it felt like that took about five minutes. And you might be thinking to yourself, like, is this it? Right? Like, okay, I made it this far, but it's just going to fall apart for me. And sure. But now, I'm looking back over at Nathan. Like, this is now the one where you go, huh, that was going really smoothly, and then it didn't. Yeah. And but you have that first thought of, what if, <laughs> right? right? I go of course. 2003, you know, that kind of thing can start to creep in as well. Yeah. And I think Nathan, he would love to finish this thing off right here with this game. You're on the play. Just give me that beautiful opener. Take advantage of the of the benefit of being on the play and secure that trophy. Yeah. But Nathan does have another loss to give. And if you just kind of try to think about what happened in that, in that last game, it's, well, Nathan did miss that land drop, right? Nathan missed that land drop, cast a duress, saw that Kane basically had nothing, just a Gorger, but was able to find the Bank Buster into a very, very key Invoke Despair slash Gix's Command off the next couple of draw steps to really kind of close the door there. So mm -hmm. um, just, just kind of wipe that away. It's like, hey, miss my land drop. You found the Invoke Despair. It's OK. I'm on the play now. I'm the aggressor. You're going to be the one favored in this matchup when you go first. Curious to see the sideboard plan from Kane's side. Um, w when you're playing kind of this Rakdos mid-range shell, you have a lot more interchangeable pieces. But when you kind of look at something that has a slightly, a little more combo element to the deck, it becomes a little bit more difficult to try to cut cards here and there, right? So you, you start thinking, OK, well, do I cut the combo entirely? Do I just keep? Itali's in just because they're good and I can cast it. Do I take out the Atraxa? 
it, it just becomes a lot more difficult. Whereas with kind of with the mid-range decks, it's a lot more straightforward. It's like, okay, these come in, these come out. I did see, I just caught on camera there that Kane did what you said, brought oh. in some removal, cut down, came back in. Yeah. As you mentioned, uh, Kane's going to be on the draw this yeah. game. Yeah. So it's so important if your opponent does go turn two Harvester for you to be able to follow that up and go turn one because you're on the draw, right? The play pattern is land, go, land, go. They play second, then they go Harvester. If you can cut down and then play your own two drop, all of a sudden it's like you've broken serve. That's right. You've gained the tempo advantage back. Right. You're the one with that permanent in play first. Right. And if you can't, then you try to keep up, but you're one right. step behind every then step. You, then you go two mana removal, kill your thing. They go Fable, and you're, it's just you're always trying to catch up. Exactly. Definitely an intense five down in the feature match area here from both of our players. So you can see. A lot on the line here for Kane. This does First. feel very do or die. See supporters going around here as they watch their favorite players left. First top finish here for Kane, trying to make it count, right? It's just like, first time, let's go. Let's just go all the way. I love that, by yeah. the way. I, I respect that a lot uh, about Kane saying, no, no, I, I'd really like to win. Yeah. You know, when, when they were talking to Cedric, it's like, th there is a kind of a just happy to be here vibe that you can pick up when you make your first really big breakthrough like this. And I, I think that it's easy to forget how difficult it is to get to this point. And sometimes it's so you fall hard. for that trap. You go, oh, you know, Nathan got me. But hey, I made it to the finals. It was really awesome. And then in three years, you're like, huh, I haven't been back there again. Right. <laughs> it's really hard. You just only get so many shots, I guess, unless you're Nathan Stoyer. And this is kind of the situation, by the way, that Kane kind of wanted to be in, even coming into this event. It's not just about, hey, I want to win this tournament. When asked, it's like, what, what are the types of players you want to play in this tournament? Kane goes, I want to beat the best players in the room. I love that. That is what That's they want. so awesome. And well, guess what? You got your <laughs> wish. You got your wish. Good luck. Hard one. Let's see if Kane can even things up here as we work our way into our fourth game in our final. Nathan Stoyer looking to make history. If he's able to win this game, he will have won two of the last three premier level tournaments, which in a world where top eighting, two of those three would be considered uh, a career achievement. Top eighting all three, in this case, top four and two top eights, and having won two of them is that's the stuff of legend. That's Kaibuda level stuff. It, it, yeah. You just don't see it. John Finkel, right? Like no, the, these is, are the names is, that have something. pulled if, off things if, like if, that. If Nathan can win this, it's something that's just, you know, there's something that happens once every 15 years or something like right. that, right? And so, um, yeah, it's, it's just absolutely incredible to just see Nathan just getting better. I don't, I don't know. I mean, talk he about being I, dialed in. Yeah, it's just. When, when you see him play, it just seems like he just knows everything that's going to happen. Just yes. anticipates absolutely everything. Covers all bases at all times. I think that these type of decks really uh, benefit him as well. Mid-range decks with lots of decisions where, you know, you're rewarded for taking the correct paths. They're not necessarily laid out in front of you. And by the way, when Nathan did win the World Championship, he's playing a lot of the same cards, mm. right? We're, he won with Grixis mid-range when everybody else was playing Esper mm. mid-range, right? Coincidence? And he's back here with Blood Tithe Harvesters, Invoke Despairs, and Fables of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, Duress is going to start things off here in game number four. Nathan Stoyer has Black Cleave Cliffs into Duress. That's an Invoke Despair that is the only target there. What do you think about the land, uh, excuse me, the hand there for Kane? It's all right. I mean, you do have the Blood Tithe Harvester. Kane did mulligan, mm -hmm. right? So getting the rest is unfortunate. But as long as Kane can play your two drop, maybe find a three, and continue hitting your land drops, 
they'll certainly still be in this. Nathan's hand is fantastic. Would like to find a land, though, right? Again, with the two lands. With the Bank Buster, though, much higher chance of being able to find that land. Two drop for two drop here, says Kane Reinhard. Plays out the Blood Tithe Harvester. Land? Ooh. Oh, no land. So is, is Nathan just forced to activate the Bank Buster? Uh, I believe so. I mean, you're going to take the three, but remember, Kane's deck has a little bit less reach than the typical Rakdos mid-range decks as they're playing a reanimator strategy. Right. Land? No. Oh, no that land again. If Ooh, Kane can did find you see a, how quickly Kane untapped those If Kane those can lands. find a three drop here. Okay, no three drop, so that's going to be a relief here for Nathan. Oh, we're going to get a real game. Nathan does need to find these land drops, but... He may have a little bit of a reprieve, although he is taking three a turn. It's going to add up pretty quickly. Right now, I mean, Kane's found the Atalia has a blood. If, you, if, if they can find a Cruelty of Gix to okay. get that Atalia in play. Perfect land drop off the top here, Blackleaf Cliffs. Okay, huge, huge. Does have an answer for the Blood Tithe Harvester now. Doesn't necessarily need to use the Rep Bank Buster this turn because you're hitting your land for this turn. Kane watching very closely to see if Nathan has, in fact, hit this land or not. <laughs> I mean, you could just run out Liliana here mm -hmm. and just go, hey, spend my mana, play Liliana minus, get the Harvester off the battlefield. Okay. Close. Instead, it's going to be the middle ground. Yeah. Oh, and... Okay. Getting and that's an attack for four. Getting aggressive here, thinking it's very likely that Kane probably has a removal spell here for the Harvester. Mm-hmm. And as a result, it's just, hey, I'm going to get you, get you, and I, I can still... I think he knows about I can it, still, yeah. Yeah, right. And then I can sack my blood to continue trying to find lands. See, this is, these right. are the small plays, right? right. Like Nathan getting in there Nathan for four. Because Nathan had legitimately four reasonable lines there. Exactly. Right? And Nathan just seems to be able to find the best one over and over and over again. But Kane's going to have a pretty nice board here. We're, we're getting an attack in for three, and now we have Atsushi. And Nathan does not have an exile removal effect. So if Nathan uses a way to kill Atsushi, that'll give Kane three treasures. Uh -huh. Kane has an Atali in, okay. in, in their hand. So you like the plan here from Kane Reinhard. No land. That was a go for the throat. Okay. But as you mentioned. Right. Kind of awkward against Atsushi. Land? Okay, so that's a Black Cleave Cliffs. Mm -hmm. So that's a happy to hit the land drop, not so happy with which one it happened to be scenario. But it's rough, you're at 14. You want to kill the 4-4, but you don't. Right. Also, when you kill the 4-4 matters, you don't want to take the 4. Sometimes that just happens that way. It's going to be Graveyard Trespasser. Okay. And a Blackleaf Cliffs before passing the turn back over to Kane. So, this is going to be. Is that a second at Sushi in hand for Kane? It does look like it. Interesting, right? You could use that as a really awkward way to generate three mana. <laughs> oh, right. You could just Legend Rule one away. Right to make sure that you can play the Atali. Or you can just pitch it to the blood. But with the Trespasser out, <coughs> let's see what happens. I think this is going to be another is, Atsushi. Is this it? Oh, uh, right. that's a Kane, sweet Kane, Kane could also Kane. just look to flip the top two cards. No, it looks oh, like it's treasure. No. It's All Itali right. o'clock. We're on Itali here. But now that there's three treasures in play, Nathan doesn't feel as bad about using a removal spell on the Atsushi. That's true. But you do have to be mindful of the big creature that's going to enter the battlefield next turn. That part does feel bad if you're Nathan Stoyer. Four mana, make three treasures. Hey. Untap my Atsushi, go. Look. <laughs> <laughs> when you play awesome seven drops, you do what you got to do. What was that? Was that an obliterating bolt? Yes. Wow. Which Great does draw actually there. Exile. And now has go for the throat 
for the Atali. So a lot of it will come down to what Kane Reinhardt finds off this Atali. Yeah, we've seen some very big swings in both directions. Sometimes Atali is just okay, and sometimes it's devastating. And there's okay, go for the throw. Killing everything. The go ahead. All right. But Nathan has to know what's coming yeah. here. Oh, you're at nine. Nine to 12. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Kane down to nine, but it's it's Atali O'Clock. Yeah, and this could be huge, depending on what Kane Reinhardt can hit off of this yeah. Atali. Chandra, Invoke Despair, right? Those are the big cards you want to hit. Those are the hitters. Atraxa. Let's see what happens. Oh. Okay, just a two drop on one side and oh. Oh, another that gets one the on the trespasser. other. It does. Okay. So not bad, but that was on the lower end. That is on the lower end, but this does mean that an Invoke Despair will not kill the Atali that's in play. Okay, because of the redundant Blood Tithe Harvester. Is Kane down to one card, though? Do they want to discard the last? Oh, no, they, they have plenty of cards here. Of course, Paul's talking about the ward ability on the Trespasser. Right. Oh, down to just the Flesh Quarter. It's, is this go for the throw worth killing the Trespasser? I suppose the answer is no. Okay. Still needs a mana to be able to hard cast the big version of the Flesh Gorger. Yep. One treasure in play. Really tough creature to remove, especially with Nathan at 12 life. And there's a braid. Can Land Liliana. Is yours. Sacrifice. And minus attack. Liliana of the Veil. Yeah, attack. Get in for four because you do the drain. Kane's going to go down to five here. Nathan's going up to 13. Okay. That also takes away the possibility of getting doesn't get it done. Tali back. Nathan has, did Nathan have an abrade in hand? I think he just used it. Okay. Yeah, I think he just used it to kill the... Uh, but has the Invoke Despair. Right? Has Nathan set this up beautifully? Next turn, Nathan can go invoke despair. Kill you? Kill you. Right? Do you it's have to pitch the blood? Rich flesh Scourger. That's you it. Yeah, you might just need to pitch the blood and dig here instead of just going for the Flesh Scourger. Nathan Stoyer on the absolute verge. So close. Once again of the greatest run in modern magic history. Two He has to sit and, and wait events. as Kane figures out. Oh, oh he's going to play his land that and play the it. Flesh Gorger, and that means that Nathan Stoyer has the win. He slams down Invoke Despair, and that is going to do it. Nathan Stoyer did it again. How does he keep winning He everything? can't stop. He is unstoppable. The best player in the world, Nathan. Nathan Stoyer, our world champion, runner-up finisher at the last Pro Tour, and now he wins Pro Tour March of the Machine. I have never seen anything like this. Oh, and look at this. You can see he's surrounded by his teammates here. <laughs> handshake, handshake. They're all shaking hands in the middle as well. The best team, the best, the best player. player, and uh, he They're showed not. the world once again why. That is unbelievable stuff from Nathan Stoyer taking home another trophy. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Two wins in three events. We have not seen that in so, so long. And look, he's still going, right? I mean, that's he the thing. He hasn't slowed down. Like, he's it's still not going. like we talk about this and, oh, remember when Nathan won all those turn Like, and, see and, you in Barcelona, and Nathan? Again, I want to stress just how incredibly hard these tournaments are. They are so hard. You're playing against the best players. Even if you're playing against somebody where you have an edge, you're, you're like a 60-40 edge, exactly. right? And the fact that he's able to come back and do this event over event over event, it's just so, so incredible. You see Kane over there, though. 
first top finish, making it to the finals. Hey, we got to give great Big props run. to Keen Reinhard. What an incredible run. Found the right build to beat the best deck in the format. That is exactly where you want to be. Some people went a little bit too big with it, you know, super reanimator, and that didn't work, but just a little hint of extra reanimator was what was needed. So congratulations to Kane on a great finish, but Kane ran into the buzzsaw. Nathan Stoyer, nobody beats Nathan Stoyer these days. This is the type of thing that is unheard of for a game like ours. It just doesn't work like that. Yeah, it's, I mean, maybe it was, maybe, again, maybe something that you could pull off a long time ago, but now the players, they're just, the field is just so, so incredibly strong. And to see Nathan be able to do this, it's just unthinkable. It really it is. It really is. If somebody were to tell you, hey, there's a person who's gonna top eight three events in a row, win two of them, one of them being the World Championship, one of them being the Pro Tour, I would say that's, that's not just happening. impossible. That's that just not going to happen. That's just not how this works. Well, and, but I, I guess apparently it, does. it is. Yeah, Nathan Storer has something to say about it. Great combination of prep work and execution from him, right? As we see again, you know, this team has continued to come up with the best decks over and over again for the last few tournaments. Yeah, and, and that's the thing with, with this team in particular. A lot of the times, they just pick the best deck. Not a coincidence. And change a few cards. Yeah. And then they just play it the best, yeah. right? You've seen them do this many, many times. And they just continue doing that. It's just a lot of times people try to get a little creative with the way they build a deck. It's like, oh, I'm going to go over the top. No, then I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's like, no, 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 no. Stick to the basics. Play the best cards. We recognize that it's Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Blood Tide Harvester, Invoke Despair. And we're just going to make a couple of tweaks and just beat everybody else because right. we're better than them. Well, we want to hear from Nathan Story. He's standing with a Cedric Phillips right now. Thank you, Marshall. Nathan, Nathan, uh, world champion, and now the winner of Pro Tour March of the Machine, Nathan Stoyer. <laughs> So, I'm kind of new to like the whole interview, the winner of the Pro Tour. I'm like new to this, right? So I was like, you know, like Nathan wins Worlds and I'll interview somebody else. And then the next Pro Tour, I'll view a different person. And then you're back again. <laughs> you're making this look way too easy. Like, this game's really hard. And you have these awesome teammates that are helping you. How are you doing this and making it look so easy? You know, I don't know, Cedric, I, a big shout out to Team Handshake. I mean, it's utterly absurd how much work we put into this tournament, and I think our prep was at the top of the top for this tournament. I mean, we put four in top eight. Beyond me winning the tournament, pay attention to the fact that one, two, three, four was Team Handshake. Let's go, guys. <laughs> but I, I will take some of the credit, I would say, <laughs> for picking Javier Dominguez as a teammate. Oh, wow. Way to save it. Way to save it. <laughs> okay, so standard. There is Rakdos Midrange, there's Grixis, there's Esper Legends, there's Domain, there's a bunch of different decks you can choose to play. You guys set it on Rakdos Midrange with Chandra and Light of the Night, and you know, some people wanted to take Grixis because of Corpse Appraiser and the counter spells. You guys just said, we don't want to do that. We're two color. You of course won worlds with Grixis. So tell me why Rakdos. Really, Rakdos was just a concession to the fact that we thought Fable on turn three was essential and we didn't want bad mana problems. And uh, I think that our testing suggested we didn't need Corpse Appraiser to win the Marin, so I loved our configuration for the tournament. Well, your configuration obviously worked out beautifully. In the finals, you're playing against Kane, Rakdos Reanimator, a somewhat popular deck. You know, people want to be able to get those big creatures into play, attracts uh, amongst them. Any fear of that matchup coming in? Did you guys just have a solid game plan? I was pretty terrified of the Phyrexian Flesh Gorgers just getting ahead on life and practically unkillable, especially in game one. I have to either invoke it or use my one in Braid. But luckily, I was able to set up good spots around it in uh, every game except for the third. So it wasn't too bad. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So you've got this fantastic team behind you. And... It's Team Handshake, so can I, can I? Oh my goodness, thank you so much. This is our champion right here. It's Nathan Stoyer! Pro Tour March of the Machine champion. Marshall, we're heading back to you. 
Unbelievable stuff. Uh, <laughs> just, I still can't believe that he won. <laughs> I have a question. You know, we've got uh, another PT coming up in a few months' time here. It's going to be modern. Are these cards legal in modern? Can he play these? Is I believe he can, but I will he say he might need to Fable. put them aside, possibly just because <laughs> modern is extremely powerful. But, you know, Nathan also no stranger to older formats. So, I mean, if you're going to pick a person to potentially do it again... <laughs> It's going to be him. Yeah, I mean, this is where his experience at Magic pays off, right? Yeah. He has been playing for such a long time, even at a relatively young age. You know, it does mean that he's familiar with all of the old formats, all of the old cards, and he'll be able to adapt right away. And, I mean, we already had our eye on him here just because of the potential storyline. I mean, going all the way back to the booster drafts earlier in the prior two days, but uh, we're going to have all cameras on him yeah. in Barcelona. I still look back to that World Championship where... We were kind of, a lot of people were kind of pegging him as the new guy, right? Mm -hmm. Is he going to be the guy? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were asked, it's like, who, who, are, who, who do you want to play or who are you concerned about at this event? And a lot of people did say Nathan Stoyer. Yeah, it's like, watch out for him. Player. He's going to be the one. That's right. Yeah, it's interesting when we see these kind of career arcs come. We've seen this happen multiple times where somebody's around for a long time. I know that person. You know, they've made a few good runs here or there, maybe some tournament, high tournament finishes, but not quite at the PT level. And then all of a sudden, they get there, right? They get on a better testing team. They put up some good results, and they kind of don't look back. But this is different. This is not that. Yeah, you, you don't see this. It's one of those things where, yes, you get better, but it's like a gradual thing, right? It's like you put a top finish together. You learn some things. You go with your teammates. Maybe you have a bad event. Then you come back, and then you get better. Nathan just won and then just kept winning. Yes. So, incredible stuff from Nathan Stoyer. Thank you so much for joining us here from the booth for Paul Chiano, Marshall Cyclops. Let's head it back to Maria. Thank you so much, Marshall and Paul. What an incredible end <laughs> to this tournament here, Monty. And you kind of just have to laugh, right? It's just amazing, isn't it? It is absolutely unbelievable. Nathan tweeted this morning, top eight time, let's finish what I couldn't do last time. This time without a Reed Duke in the way. And, <laughs> you know, it, we're having conversations about Nathan in comparison to legends of the game. When we're talking about three in a row, we're talking about Luis Scott Vargas doing a three run back in 2016. There were no wins in that run. Nathan has two right now, already the world champion. Now are we thinking Kai Buddha? Are, are, are we, I mean, is it fair to start having this discussion right now? At what point in Kai's run of seven wins do people start thinking of him as Kai? At what point in Nathan's run are we thinking he's, there's just no stopping him? He's unbelievable. Yeah, this is truly, truly an incredible finish. And he mentioned his team as well, Team Handshake. Just the greatest right now. They're, they're, they just can't be stopped. We keep seeing... We were talking about it in the draft yesterday... There were four in the top draft pod. They only lost to each other. They dominated that draft pod as well. It's not just constructed. It's not just, wow, they broke the format with Rakdos midrange, the most played deck in the field. They're just that good. Wow, so lucky to see such incredible players doing so amazingly well at this game. Everybody, it's time for the trophy presentation with Cedric Phillips. Thank you, Maria. It is now time to present the trophy at Pro Tour March of the Machine. In first place, your champion with his team behind him, Nathan Stoyer!
<laughs> well, we started the weekend with 252 players and now only one remains. And that is your champion, Nathan Stoyer. Pro Tour March of the Machine marched into the heart of Minneapolis on Friday, bringing with it all the drama of an invasion of the multiverse. From the highs of an amazing draft format, some say the best in recent memory, to the lows of crushing defeat in the final rounds of standard, Pro Tour March of the Machine marched ever onwards. And as the dust settled on the final eight players, half of which represented a single team, Team Handshake chatter began to circulate about one of those players in particular, Nathan Stoyer. Could he do it again? And it turns out that yes, Yes, he could. Now widely considered to be the best playing the game, Nathan Stoyer takes it all down. He is your newest Pro Tour champion, at the same time as being your world champion. He is truly the machine. Next up is Pro Tour Barcelona this summer. Until then, have a great time playing the best game ever invented. Good night, everybody.